I want to talk about cellular respiration, which is a process that occurs both in plants and in animals. And many places will represent that cellular respiration doesn't happen in plants. So I want to make sure that we really stress and emphasize that this is occurring in plants as well. Cellular respiration addresses the need for energy from the other side of things. So we know that all living things require energy to repeat to complete their cell processes. And that includes for plants, things like growing, growing new leaves, growing fruit, growing flowers, right? And that energy is then stored in chemical bonds, which are glucose for the most part in bi basic level biology. And when chemical bonds are broken, then we can release that energy and store it as ATP, which is kind of like converting into a currency that everyone in the cell can use. Right? Cellular respiration is the process of breaking down sugar, which is glucose, in the presence of oxygen. And that's done by nearly all cells, and it's necessary to create cell energy. Um, it happens in the mitochondria. It, for cellular respiration to occur, we need some glucose, we need some sugar, and we need some oxygen. And what you get out of cellular respiration are carbon dioxide, water, and some energy that's been captured and stored in the form of ATP. So if you were to look at this as a chemist, we would have C6H12O6, which is glucose, and six oxygens. And we're basically lighting those on fire inside of your cells in a really controlled kind of a fashion so that we can get carbon dioxide, water, and then we can capture the heat off of that fire as energy for the rest of our body to use. And we actually get to generate 36 ATP for one round of cellular respiration, which is great, All right? So our cells are breaking the bonds in the glucose and through many, many chemical reactions, which yet again, thankfully you don't need to know, the energy is released and converted to a form that the cell can use, which is your ATP. All right. So production of ATP is slightly different in autotrophs compared to heterotrophs, right? Autotrophs use light to produce the glucose and oxygen. And then they take that glucose and oxygen that are produced in photosynthesis and they use them in cellular respiration. So they are gonna, take that light energy, store it as chemical bond energy and glucose, and then convert it to chemical bond energy and ATP. This contrasts greatly with heterotrophs who can't produce their own glucose, so we're kind of mooches. And so they have to eat to get their glucose, right? And so they're still gonna be producing carbon dioxide both sides of them, right? So we're gonna have heterotrophs that need to eat to get their glucose so that then they can burn it and turn it into 